Hey there, good morning folks. Hola como estas, amigos, friends and compañeros del mundo, friends and family from all over the world. It's your man, the one and only, Yao Fusu, Globe Master. Now today, I'm responding to a, a message sent to me by a sister sister with the name of um let me see i got a piece of paper here to read eva basong from chicago illinois now miss basong she said hi mr fosu i can most definitely relate to the video you did about it's cool to be african these days in america she said, I showed it to my husband and we both had a great laugh about it. Now, I came to America as a 13 year old Cameroonian girl who could barely speak English. Wow. And I can definitely relate to most of the things you said because I had a hell of a time growing up in Chicago she said keep up the good work and me and my husband have subscribed to your channel okay well thank you miss Basong thank you very much so Ms. Basong, you definitely can relate to what I was saying. See, growing up in the 90s, especially here in New York, I know some African kids that actually, I don't know if they dropped out of school or some of them just had to leave our school, probably to find another school because of bullying, right? And me personally, I held my own because I, I had a slick, slick tongue, okay? I think the only advantage I had was that, um, first of all, I was born here in this country and I was going to back, Ghana back and forth. So I had a slick tongue I had to come back for anything they threw at me, right? Now, personally, I think some of the problems we had, I'm gonna blame it on National Geographic. National Geographic and the American media in the 80s and 90s, they screwed up African name, man. If you was African, the only thing that Americans knew about Africa was what they saw on TV. And if you can remember, in the 1980s and 90s, all they showed about, about Africa on TV here in America was Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu, a South African movie that was practically based on something that happened like five to six hundred years ago. They have South African actresses and actors walking around, especially the women with their titties all over the place. And most idiot Americans thought that's what Africa was like at that time, okay? What else can I think of? Um, do you remember this movie, The Girls Must Be Crazy? Another South African movie about some, you know, the, um, what do you call those people? Those, um, what do you, you call, I think they are called the Khoisai, the Khoisai or Khoisan tribe in South Africa. They look like, 
you know, they, they look like black Asians, like Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela comes from that tribe, you know. They're Africans, but they look a Asiatic, right? Those people, so they thought, most Americans thought that's what Africa's like, right? And then um, nature, PBS will show programmings like about the pygmies in the middle of the jungle in Congo, or, or they will show programming, program, programs about like the nilotes. The nilotes is like, you know, if you don't know what a nilot is, like, you know, people that look like Manut Bo, them seven feet tall people in the middle of Sudan someplace, dark as shit, tall like animals. And, you know, these people are very primitive. They do stupid things like they will stick their head in behind a cow's ass, you know, shit like that. So basically, most Americans thought being an African, that's what you was. Okay? American media never, and I mean, they never ever showed anything about most high's people they never ever ever showed anything about how civilized most high's people really are that we are actually the people that civilized the europeans our ancestors pretty much taught, taught they taught europeans how to take baths properly. Do your research, okay? Sure, our, our ancestors made mistakes too. You have idiots like Mansa Musa, who traveled to Mecca to practically show off the wealth we have in Africa. And then coming back, he was followed by the Alibabas. Now, if you know who Alibabas are, Arabs. What came after that? Slavery. So, you know, our forefathers made some mistakes. But anyway, getting back to, to, to the topic. Most Americans, especially the ones that look just like us, were the ones that gave us most of the hard times because they didn't know any better. Okay? And now look, even African Americans, even up to today, the American media will throw shit right into their face, like movies like Twelve Years a Slave, or um, Amistad, or, or Django, to remind them, look, this is where you came from. All right. So, if you say you you can relate to what I what I was saying, I can understand you. I can definitely understand you because the Western media, they gave us a bad name in those days, even up to now, they still try to do it. But thanks, thanks to the Most High, people can see Africa now on YouTube, see the real that we live in cities that are actually more beautiful than here in America, okay? People see cities like like Cape Town in South Africa, Accra, Ghana, you know, Nairobi, Kenya. They see cities with, with skyscrapers and they, they can't believe it. And they're like, this, this is Africa? They couldn't believe that Africa have simple things like vehicles. <laughs> I mean, as dumb as it sounds, people ask, do you guys still live on trees? And you know, nonsense, stupid stupidity. But you know, times are changing now. Times are definitely changing. Let me see if I could talk about anything else that I left behind. Another um, subscriber made a comment that in Europe, him growing up in Europe, some of the Africans were pretending to be, to be um, like West Indians, not to be laughed at. And I, I get it. 
I get it. It's the same thing was happening over here too. There were a lot of guys that um during my days were of African descent that would pretend to be Jamaicans or or any other thing but African not to be bullied. I get that. Right? So sis, thanks for your comment. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad that you say you and your husband have subscribed. And um, pretty much just saying thanks. Thanks for the message. All right. Um, this is your man, Yafusu. This, this was just a response video. And um, I think before I end this, I'm going to say something. Any child that grew up in the 90s here in America that has grown up to become a man or a woman. We actually, we actually went through the roughest. But see, in those days, being African wasn't very common here. Especially in the you know late 80s and the early 90s. It was very it wasn't very common at all. So we we went through the harshest part. Right? We went through it. Like I see my ch my children now, especially my son. My son would not wear a pair of sneakers that don't cost more than $200. And sometimes it cracks me up, man, because growing up here, I remember, listen, my first pair of Nikes was when I got a job at 16 and started saving money to buy my own clothes. Because if you grew up here in America to African parents, now I'm sure it's not just Cameroonian because we Ghanaians, Nigerians, whatever. Your parents were not gonna spend a hundred dollars to buy sneakers for you. Okay, you have to get it on your own. So we are actually the pathfinders. We we did a lot. All right, I'm gonna end it here. The name is Yao Fusu, the original Globe Master. Thanks for the comments, and um, God bless.